Hi there again. So we are in lesson two of module one for Oracle EBS R12 integration with Oracle Access Manager for single sign-on. My name is Atul Kumar and in this lesson we are going to look at architecture and various components that are part of EBS OM integration. But before that, let's do a quick recap on what we have covered in lesson one. So we started lesson one with why you need to integrate or why you should integrate Oracle eBusiness Suite with Access Manager and what is single sign-on means. Then we looked at single sign-on flow where we looked at three steps or three main steps that is checking the authentication policy, authenticating the user and then authorizing the user. Now let's look at the architecture in this lesson. So there is a slight difference between the EBS 12.2 including integration architecture. So what those architectures are, I'll cover that shortly. But if you see, this is the user on the left hand side. This is Oracle eBusiness Suite R12.2 application tier. And this is Oracle eBusiness Suite database. So when in a typical non-single sign-on environment, user will try EBS R12.2 URL. The EBS R12.2 will send user or present user with a username and password. And user will submit that username and password. And that username and password will be validated against FND user table in EBS 12.2. Now, when you integrate Oracle eBusiness Suite with Oracle Access Manager, there is a slight difference or the flow is slightly different. But what you do is Oracle eBusiness Suite application tier 12.2 comes with Oracle Fusion Middleware. And what two components you have in that Fusion Middleware are one is Oracle HTTP server or web server. And second is Oracle WebLogic server. That is the application server on which you have forms, OA core and other applications that gets deployed. So that's EBS 12.2. So when you integrate these eBusiness suite with Oracle Access Manager, you do a Oracle Access Manager, which is deployed or represented here. Then you have Oracle Internet Directory or OUD, which is the LDAP server. So you deploy these two components, OAM and OID, and you integrate Oracle Access Manager with OID. And on EBS application tier, you put two more components. One is Access Gate and second is Web Gate. I'll explain shortly when we come to these components, what is Access Gate and what is Web Gate. But both these components get deployed on the EBS node. So if you have multiple eBusiness Suite node for high availability or for clustering, you will be deploying these web, web gates and access gate on each EBS middle tier. So if you have three node EBS environment or three EBS application tier, you can configure three EBS or you must configure three web gate and access gate on those servers, depending on whether that node is web tier or application or configured as a web node and application node. Here, this component web gate is nothing but a policy enforcement point and role of the web gate is any request that's coming to EBS, it will first take that request to Oracle Access Manager for authentication and authorization as we discussed in the previous lesson. Then you have second component, which is access gate, which is nothing but a Java application that comes as a part of patch for Oracle eBusiness Suite that gets deployed on the WebLogic server. And the role of this access gate is once authentication is successful with Oracle Access Manager and request comes back to the eBusiness Suite application tier with an authenticated user ID, access gate will take this user ID, connect behind the scene with EBS database validate this user one more time to see if user exists in EBS 12.2 database, FND user table. And if user exists, 
it will link this user, which is the user authentic came from OAM OID authentication with EBS 12.2. And will then it will create a session in Oracle eBusiness Suite, FND session in Oracle eBusiness Suite database and allow user to access eBusiness Suite application tier. So I repeat, there is a Oracle Access Manager, Oracle Internet Directory, and on EBS 12.2, you put two additional components. One is WebGate. This WebGate will be installed with Oracle HTTP server part of eBusiness Suite 12.2. So eBusiness Suite 12.2 have two Fusion middleware components. One is Oracle HTTP server and second WebLogic server. So WebGate will get created or gets deployed with OHS and Access Gate, which is a Java application, will get deployed on the WebLogic server and it will create a new managed server. What is a WebLogic server? What is a managed server? How does it create that managed server? How does it get deployed on that server? We are going to do or I'm going to explain in subsequent modules when we do the hands-on. So just to understand, in EBS R12, you have first EBS R12.2 with two components that you get deployed at the time of integration. One is access gate and second is web gate. Then you have Oracle Access Manager, which is this. Then you have Oracle Directory Server. That could be Oracle Internet Directory or OID, or it could be OUD, Oracle Unified Directory. These are the only two directory servers supported with Oracle EBS. Now, if you have AD, there's other method to integrate and we'll cover that in advanced deployments where if you have active directory and users are in active directory and you want users to be validated or authenticated against active directory, how you integrate this whole setup with eBusiness Suite that will cover that in advanced deployments. Similarly, if you have any other single sign-on product apart from Oracle Access Manager, and if you want to authenticate a, a user against an other single sign-on product, which is non-Oracle, then how you do that, again, we'll cover that in advance. For now, just focus on these two, Oracle Access Manager and OID or OUD. So flow is going to be user will try to access EBS they will hit Oracle HTTP server part of EBS first. Their web gate will intercept user's request. It will forward that intercept request to Oracle Access Manager. Oracle Access Manager will have its own database where policy will be defined around Oracle EBS URL to be protected and protected by what authentication scheme. User will be redirected to the Oracle Access Manager login page that's generated by or came from policy defined in Oracle Access Manager during integration. Once user type username and password that gets submitted to Oracle Access Manager, Oracle Access Manager will pick that user ID and password, will submit it to the OID for validating the user ID and password or either OID or OUD. Once OID or OUD says authentication is successful, a session will be created in Oracle Access Manager. Then the authenticated user ID and one more thing, which is called as GUID, which is a global user ID. These two details will be sent to the web gate. Then this request will be intercepted by Access Gate. Access Gate will pick up the authenticated user ID and global user ID, these two details, and take these two details with eBusiness Suite database. It will check against the FND user table and if a user is found with the same global user ID, then a link is being made. Or if a user is identified with the same user ID that has already authenticated, then a link is being made. If both user ID or global user ID is not found, then it will there's a separate mechanism, which I'll, I'll explain separately, that auto link or linking a user feature will kick in, cover that separately. For now, let's assume the user exists in FND user table as well. So once that happens, the linking of user happens automatically, a session will be created into FND user 
or ICX session will be created in EBS database and a session will be created in Oracle eBusiness Suite application tier. And after that, user can access EBS directly without going on to the Oracle access manager later. So then user will access EBS. So this is the flow for EBS R12.2 integration with Oracle Access Manager. Now, 12.1 is slightly different. And the only thing different is these two components, Access Gate and Web Gate, are deployed somewhere else. So this is the Web Gate and Access Gate. These two components are deployed outside the eBusiness Suite application tier. They can be on the same machine or they can be on a separate machine as EBS application tier. But in 12.2, these two components always sit with EBS application tier within Oracle eBusiness Suite on the same machine. Whereas in 12.1 and 12.0, these two components can be on the same machine as EBS application tier, but outside the tech stack of eBusiness Suite or they can be on two separate machines outside Oracle eBusiness Suite. We'll cover that separately. So I hope you understand. And in next lesson, I'm going to look or explain 12.1 integration or 12.0 or previous version prior to 12.2 separately. But for now, you have user, Oracle Access Manager, directory server, which could be OID or OUD, and eBusiness Suite, the eBusiness Suite database user IDs are in sync with OID or OUD using a, another component of OID or OUD called DIP, which is Directory Integration Platform. I'll cover that in subsequent lessons. And you have Access Gate and Web Gate, which are basically one acting as a policy enforcement point Web Gate, and Access Gate revalidate and creates a user session in eBusiness Suite. So this is the architecture of EBS 12.2 with Oracle Access Manager. So let's do a quick recap on what we have covered in this lesson. We looked at EBS R12.2 architecture, where I explained the EBS components or the components that gets deployed on EBS application tier, that is Access Gate and Web Gate for EBS 12.2, then Oracle Access Manager and Oracle Directory Server, that is OID or OUD. Now head on to the next lesson where we look at how the integration of 12.1 or prior releases that is 12.0 or 12.1 works and what is the authentication flow about in both EBS 12.2 and 12.1. We'll look or I'll explain all these flow by going through one step at a time in the next lesson. So I'll see you in next lesson.